Revenge Films. I divorced my wife a couple years ago, and now I live alone. I have a lovely daughter, Madeline, but unfortunately my wife took custody over her when the divorce became official. But I want to somehow have some positive impact on my daughter, even just a little bit. So every month, I never fail to pay child support. It's not just become my life as a single man. And I have a friend, Isidore, who sometimes invites me out to drink, invited me out as usual. How about we go out for a drink after work tonight? Nah, man, I'm good. Did you have another previous engagement? Sort of. My daughter's birthday's coming up soon, and I want to get her a present. Oh yeah, that's right. It's almost three years since you divorced your ex-wife, is it not? Now is the adorable Madeline. You've been muttering under your breath that you haven't seen her lately. I guess you want to see her pretty badly, right? I mean, duh, bro. She is such a cute little thing. My own personal angel. I don't want to see her so much. But my ex-wife is very hesitant about letting me see her. Is that so? I'm sorry, man. How old is Madeline now? She's in the third grade. What are you going to get her? Did you decide yet? No, I haven't. That's why I'm going to ask the person in charge of the toy store. And the fact that I haven't seen her for a while makes me worried whether or not the present will be to her liking. My own daughter tells me that nowadays a makeup set for children is very popular. It's nothing too fancy, just some brushes, a few combs, and some paint for nails and a little bit of lipstick and eyeliner. And that's pretty much it. Now that I think about it, Malin's only a year older than your little Miss Marion, right? Thanks for the memo, bro. Ah, oh, come on. There's nothing to thank for such a small thing like this, dog. Think you'll meet Madeline on her birthday? I have absolutely no clue. That'll all depend on Sylvia. I really hope you see her, man. Good luck to you. Hell yeah. Thanks as always, bro, for inviting me out. Invite me again next time and we'll go crazy for sure. After work that day, I went to the local toy department store and bought Madeline what Isidore told me was becoming popular with children these days. A child makeup set. As I walked out of the toy store, I called Sylvia, hoping to negotiate my seeing Madeline on her birthday. Is Madeline there? What the hell? I thought I told you not to bother us with calls every 25 minutes. Seriously, this has to stop. But her birthday's only in a couple of days. Please, Sylvia, let me talk to her just for a little bit. Well, I'm very busy right now, so I'll have to be next time. I'm on my knees right now as we speak. Just for a tiny bit, please, please. <laughs> All right, then. You get three minutes. Hi, Daddy. I miss you so much. Is that you, Madeline? Oh my gosh, it is you. How are you doing, darling? Yeah. Your birthday's coming up, isn't it? Well, Daddy got you a surprise for your birthday. Really? Oh, thank you, Daddy. What is it? You're going to have to be a good girl and wait a little bit longer before you find out. By the way, did Mommy make any plans for your birthday? No, she didn't. I think I'm going to stay home all day. Oh, really? Would you like to see Daddy? Yeah, I want to see you, Daddy. Right at that instant, Sylvia, who must have been listening right next to her, snatched the phone away from my daughter and started shouting into the speaker. Out of the question, I'm not letting her see you, all right? And that's final. Besides, we have plans for her birthday already. What do you mean my plans, pray tell? Do you have any idea how distressed I feel that you're not letting Madeline see her own father for so long? We both want to see each other so goddamn badly. It's her birthday, stupid. Of course we have lots of plans for her special day. I mean, sure, it's only natural that the mother of a child would jam-pack her child's birthday with lots of fun stuff to do. All right, then. Can I at least see her for a couple minutes just to give her her birthday present? Also out of the question. You send that along to our place through the mail. What in the world did I do to deserve this kind of punishment? It's not like I stepped on a bug and somehow wound up killing someone. Why can I not see my own daughter on her birthday? Even the divorce was your freaking idea, telling me that you couldn't put up with my bullshit any longer, and other hurtful things like that. A rift in personalities, you say. And about the custody over Madeline, I forced myself to give that up because of you, who said it would be such a shame for a child to never see her father, who is always so busy with work. You're so goddamn annoying. 
In case you didn't notice, you and I are now separated and we have nothing to do with each other anymore. And since I have custody over my daughter, if I say so, she'll never meet her father, period. And then Sylvia hung up promptly after that. I was completely convinced that I would be able to see my daughter on her birthday, her one special day, and I was very excited. But the fact that I was forbidden to even give her her present directly, let alone tend her birthday party, I fell to my knees in shock and depression. But I didn't dare give up. There was another whole month before Madeline's birthday. So I decided to ask Sylvia again before that big day arrived. However, 10 days after that day, the same friend who had invited me out to drink, Isidore, told me the most unbelievable story. Hey dude, you did mention you haven't been able to see Madeline for quite some time, right? Yep, it's even worse than you think. I tried talking Sylvia into letting Madeline see me on her birthday. She would have none of that bullshit. Yeah, about that. I have an acquaintance who lives in the same neighborhood as Sylvia, and he's told me something incredibly disturbing. Looks like a man is going in and out of that house. Sylvia's with another guy? Well, I mean, why not? She and I are completely divorced now, and it's none of my business who she dates. But why do we get the feeling that has something negative to do with Madeline? Well, your gut's telling you something, and I think you should trust it. Seems that both Sylvia and that guy leave Madeline alone in the house. I'd even heard a story that they'd abandoned the poor girl when the couple went on a trip somewhere. Bro, you cannot be serious. Tell me that ain't true. I'm afraid it is, bro. That acquaintance of mine told me that the trip the couple took lasted overnight. But then he noticed that Madeline was around the house after they'd left. But he was convinced that eventually they would come back, and so he left her with some juice boxes, some hot pockets, and some snacks. And when he asked her if everything was all right, she just nodded her head, walked slowly into the house, and actually locked the door behind her. Isidore's story left me catatonic. My own daughter, abandoned in such a large house, alone and afraid that her mother would never come back. There's no way. No way Madeline's going through this. And that's not all, bro. Unfortunately, the acquaintance told me that her clothes were in rags. And that even though it's wintertime now, she was still wearing short sleeves. Additionally, she appeared to be dangerously thin, as though she hadn't been fed something for days. Dude, be honest with me. Exactly how long have you not seen her? I don't think I've seen her for the better part of six months, but dude, forget about that bullshit. This is downright child negligence. Oh, that goddamn bitch. She will rue the day she was born. Right after Isidore told me everything, I called Sylvia with the intention of brutally interrogating her about the situation. So, you got yourself a pretty boy now, huh? Uh, right as I was thinking of how nice of you to call and you come out with that freaking bullshit? I better call the police because now I have a suspicion that you're stalking me. If you come to beg for forgiveness and to start all over again, you're making me blush. <laughs> Never in an eternity will I ever let that happen. And that's not all I've heard. And what are you doing poking around my personal business? We're divorced now and I'm entitled to live my life the way I choose to live it. You're right. It's absolutely none of my business about you dating another guy. But it's completely different ball game when it comes to my lovely daughter. What's all this bullshit about you abandoning Madeline while you will go off on a trip with that new guy of yours? And what about the fact that her clothes are in ruins and that she looks thin enough that you haven't been giving her enough to eat? Explain all this now! I'm doing my part paying child support every single month. I demand to know why the frick you don't seem to be doing yours. Eh? I'm raising her well, goddammit. Who the frick told you that boat of lies? That doesn't matter, goddammit. Let me see Madeline. Let me see my daughter now. I'm really busy right now, so not right now, all right? You won't dare show me my own daughter because you don't want me to know you've been doing things to her. Is that what's going on? Let me see my daughter, now! Should you refuse, I'll do whatever is possible to get the frick over there so I can see what the frick's going on! You keep on forgetting, we're not married anymore. If you come to this house and cause a fuss about this whole thing, I'm gonna call the police, you hear? I don't care what happens to you afterwards with the police. All I want is for Madeline to never see her father again. For a split second, I started to second guess myself. Sylvia was really doing something horrifying to my daughter, then any sensible father would immediately rush to his child's aid. 
But as of that moment, I didn't have any solid evidence proving her negligence. If she really did call the police, and if measures were made so that I would never be able to see Madeline again, then my impulsive action to help her didn't seem like the best solution after all. And then, on the other end of the line, Sylvia, with a tone that sounded like she'd won the war, added, hm. All your scaredy cat ass has to do is go on paying child support every month. I'm just doing my best to raise her into a nice young lady. Chow, bastard. And then she promptly hung up. Frick, frick, frick! What the hell should I do? Just to confirm some things. And I waited on a bench in a park near a school. Just to act casual, I'd bought a few sandwiches and a bottle of orange juice. And I munched on those as I waited. And then I found Madeline starting to walk home from school. Madeline, over here! Daddy! How are you? Tell me all right, darling. Exactly as Isidore had told me. My daughter was wearing short sleeves in the dead of winter. And she did look a lot thinner than when I last saw her. It was such a heart-wrenching sight to see my own darling daughter in such a state. I fought back tears as I said, Hey, honey. So your birthday's getting closer and closer, eh? I'll talk to your mommy. And I'll make sure you're going to spend your birthday with daddy, okay? What? Mommy told me that she's gonna take me to the amusement park on my birthday. What? The amusement park? I couldn't believe that Sylvia could do something nice like that, but it's true. From when she was young, Madeline had loved to go to the amusement park. And even now, her eyes were sparkling with excitement as she told me about how she was gonna visit it on her birthday. And the last thing I wanted was for her beautiful smile to disappear. I get it, dear. If you're going to the amusement park, then I'll give you your present sometime soon. You have fun in the amusement park, yeah? Yeah! Oh, and also, here's a body warmer. Feel warm and cozy, doesn't it? You can just throw it away somewhere when you're walking home, okay? It's so warm! Madeline, are you happy living with Mommy? She seemed to have been at a loss for words for a split second, but then she smiled and nodded her head. That smile and that nod seemed like she was forcing herself to do that. I knew it. So what Isidore told me was the truth. At least it really seems like it is the truth. Don't worry, Madeline. Daddy will come for you. Just you wait. I said my goodbyes to Madeline and then immediately started to investigate, trying to find any evidence to support Sylvia and her negligence. And then I stumbled upon something equally disturbing. What? Are you sure? My ex-wife's been going in and out of an adoption agency? According to the firm I'd hired to investigate Sylvia, they witnessed her apparently acting in ways that could suggest she was seriously considering putting Madeline up for adoption. To make matters worse, the person with whom she seemed to be negotiating the adoption with was a very wealthy tycoon. It turns out that Sylvia genuinely sought after money and was willing to give her daughter up for materialistic purposes. And here's the final straw. The day the transaction was to be made was none other than her birthday! Not only was she completely destroying Madeline's excitement to be at the amusement park she loves, but she actually intended to sell a human being! My entire body started to tremble with absolute fury. How much of a freaking slime bag could a person become? Now I know what you're thinking. Well, what the hell are you waiting for? Start making a plan to get her back to you! Her father! Believe me, I would have done that, but for the fact that I discovered all of this on the morning of her birthday! In other words, I had to act immediately and spontaneously. Good thing I had met Madeline a few days ago and given her a private cell phone. I'm gonna give you the cell phone, okay? If you ever feel lonely, or if you feel like you're in trouble, hide away from mommy and call me quickly, okay? This phone can only call me, so it's really easy too. Thanks, Daddy. Are you sure I can have this? Of course you can, dear. Just remember, if Mommy sees you with this phone, she'll probably take it away from you. Just make sure that the phone is in the best hide-and-seek player in the world, okay? And one more thing. It'll be a little dangerous for me to call you on this phone, so I'll only ever call you when it's an emergency, okay? Always pick up the phone when I call you, though. Think you can do that for Daddy? Yeah, Daddy. Thank you. I love you. I thank my past self so deeply for giving her that phone, and I immediately called her. I told her that she should hide the phone during a normal day, and that would mean if she couldn't give off any sound either. I beg you, please pick up the phone! 
Then, after a few calls, I was blessed with the sound of her voice. Daddy, what's wrong? I nearly screamed with joy. Oh, thank God! Where are you now, dear? At the amusement park, why? Okay, dear, I need you to do exactly what Daddy's about to tell you. Think you can play the copycat game? I can, but why? Is Mommy there with you right now? Yeah, she went someplace after she told me to stay right here. Thank God, this is the chance! But with the information I just discovered this morning, part of me thought that Sylvia had left her alone on purpose. She was probably right in the act of selling Madeline right now. We're coming over to the amusement park right now, dear. Just run. Run as fast as you can and get really far away from where you are. What? But we just arrived here. It's all right, dear. Daddy will take you there again. But right now, the amusement park is a dangerous place. Just run, okay? Okay, Daddy. Till I get there, you have to hide, okay? Anywhere's fine. Just make sure you become the hide-and-seek champion. Maybe stay indoors, too. Where do you want to go? I want to go to Teddy Bear's Diner. Got it. I'm going to call Teddy Bear's Diner right now. So you just run over there, okay? When you sit down, don't sit next to a window. And sit down somewhere deep inside the building, okay? Just make sure no one can see you from outside. Got it. As soon as I was done negotiating with the restaurant, I rushed to the amusement park. The park itself isn't too far from where I am. As I was heading over there, I also called the police for reinforcements. I'd also ask Isidore a favor, which was quite the bother, I'm sure. But he helped me out so much. He asked another acquaintance of his, who was a lawyer, to do a background check on the tycoon Madeline was going to be sold to. And it didn't take very long to make a near certain conclusion. The adoption enterprise he runs is fraught with illegalities. And just by using common sense, selling and buying children for a high price is really strange indeed. That adoption agency has been demanding a very high brokerage fee from the financially elite, and then finds fitting commoners to negotiate the selling of children. In a nutshell, this enterprise was probably the lowest level of human scumbag bullshit anyone could ever create. I have no idea how in the world Sylvia found out such an enterprise existed, but stopped them from doing business with Madeline as the product was my top priority. Please, please, please don't be found. Oh, Madeline, dear, please be the champion at Hide and Seek. I arrived at the restaurant, and sure enough, there was Madeline, alone, which meant she'd chosen her hiding place well. Daddy! Oh, thank God you're okay! Of course I'm okay. Why wouldn't I be? From how quickly worry spread across her face when I said that, I could tell she never dreamed her own mother would sell her to a complete stranger. Never mind that now. Let's just get someplace safe, okay? I took her hand, and after walking out of the restaurant, we made our way across the parking lot and across the street beyond it. That's the neighborhood where my older sister lived with her husband. I explained everything to Liz once we'd arrived. By the time I was done, Liz had gone deathly pale. She took a deep breath and said, This is absolutely crazy. Someone who willingly sells their own child can only be classified as criminally insane and nothing else. I agree with you 10,000%. That's why I'm going to end this with Sylvia once and for all, right now. i just like you to hold on to Madeline until I come back. Of course. Oh my, look at how thin you've become, dear. And your clothes, oh, what a horrible sight. I have a few hand-me-downs for my daughter. Just you wait, dear. She promptly returned with her daughter, my niece's old clothes from the living room closet, and helped Madeline get changed. Here you go, Madeline. Change into these warm, clean clothes. You must be freezing in those rags, right? Wow, that looks so cute! My niece, Avery, is now in high school, and Liz had kept a bunch of her old clothes, all of which had some amount of style. Avery's actually coming home soon, so how about we have a sleepover tonight? What? I can have a sleepover? Of course! And as a special treat since it's your birthday, we're going to take you out to pizza! Yay! Pizza! My favorite food in the whole wide world! I can rest easy now knowing my sister Liz, who has experience carrying younger children, is taking care of Madeline. She then told me, You did the right thing bringing her here to me. Don't you worry about her. I'll keep her safe and warm. Now you go on and give that bitch what she freaking deserves. Sorry. You can count on me! I then called Sylvia. Boy, have I got something to talk to you about! 
Shut the frick up. I don't have time for that right now. Something terrible's happened. If you're referring to the fact that Madeline's disappeared, give up, bitch. You will never find her again. Because I've taken her somewhere safe and away from you monsters. Eh? Uh, how dare you? You better not be pulling my leg or I swear on my life I'll make you rue the day you ever met me. I already do, goddammit! I still cannot believe you intended to go through with this. Truth be told, I'd actually been investigating lots of stuff. And oh, what do we have here? My ex-wife Sylvia has been trying to sell off her own nine-year-old daughter! What are you freaking on about? Why would I sell off my own daughter? Sorry, but our investigation revealed the truth already. Lie and cover it up all you want. It's not going to change things. Oh, did I forget to remind myself that you had an unbelievable amount of debt? Enough bullshit. This isn't your business. True. It's not my business, regardless of how much debt you have or how many guys you're mooching off of to get more money to repay them. No, that's not my business. But it sure became my freaking business when you resorted to selling off my daughter so you could repay those debts completely. Shut up. Just shut up. The child is legally mine. It doesn't matter what I do to her, does it? Now tell me, where the frick is she? Bring her back now. You can't expect me to say, oh, then by all means, when my own daughter is actually being auctioned away. That child is now under heavy protection in the secluded area right as we speak. Now hang on a sec. Way to make things concerning. I've already paid part of the money and the deal doesn't come full circle without me giving her to them. And I have to give her up, like now. You're such a slime bag. You call yourself a mother with that bird brain of yours? You never even used the child support I paid month after month for Madeline, did you? She's so thin and her clothes are so grody. I'm surprised there weren't any cockroaches living in the armpits. Eh? And you've been seeing Madeline behind my back this whole time? I don't believe you. Yeah, mm-hmm. Keep up that seclusive attitude, honey. And keep me away from my daughter, who, unlike you, I love so very, very much. Enough, Dad. Just bring that child back this instant. Oh, I know. I'll even give you a portion of the money. That's a fair deal, right? Win-win for the two of us, just like old times. And I've had it up to here with your frickin' horse shit! I'm never, I repeat, never gonna give Madeline to the likes of you ever again! Plus, you won't get to see her in any case. The police should be there with handcuffs by now. The frick? Who's talking horse shit now? As soon as I discovered you were trying to sell Madeline off at a sickeningly high price, I had a deeper investigation of that agency you hired to do the job. And we pretty much immediately found out it's completely illegal. So the police should be right up your tail for turning to them to achieve your own personal goals. They're probably staying close to you so that they can find the scumbags in charge of this whole stupid operation. What? Tell me this isn't true. And what good would lying do me now? I told the police every last detail about what's going on. And per their request, I sent them a snapshot of your face under the title, Woman Looking to Sell Daughter. Now hang on, you don't mean I'm going to get arrested. Ah, oh, looks like your brain's working for once. Oh, hell no, help me! Yeah, yeah, sure. Your ex-husband, whose daughter you tried to sell without even batting an eyelash, is coming to help you. Only when pigs fly faster than the speed of light will that ever happen, bitch! Right as we were talking about this and that, the people who trusted Sylvia to sell them her child into their family became frustrated about not being able to find Madeline and showed themselves before her. That's when the police intervened and apprehended them all quickly. The call I was having with Sylvia was severed right when the police took action. But then they called me directly, telling me, We've apprehended them. We need your visual confirmation, and we await your arrival. I made my way back to the amusement park, and sure enough, I found my ex-wife bound and restrained, along with the people who wished to buy Madeline from her. As I expected, the couple consisted of an older man and an attractive younger woman, both dressed rather extravagantly, and they reeked of riches. The bastard clearly never imagined the police were right there waiting for them, and I could tell his feeble mind couldn't keep up with the sudden turn of events. His voice sounded very panicked. Sylvia, with who she is as a human scumbag, resisted the offer restraining her, and actually landed a clean hit to the jaw with her elbow. The poor officer fell to the ground, and I had to hand it to Sylvia. The officer quickly recovered, and with a stern expression, proceeded to restrain Sylvia even more painfully. 
Later on, I spoke to the police and to the local court of domestic affairs about how my ex-wife was planning to do what she was going to do with Madeline, as well as the fact that she'd been so immersed in her love affair that she completely neglected caring for her daughter. She was promptly and officially under arrest. Additionally, the adoption agency in question, which was only under suspicion of being illegal, albeit pretty much guaranteed, it was now confirmed. And all personnel involved in that enterprise, from the tycoon who managed it, to the people working for it, to the people who hired it to make business, were all promptly arrested as well. Sylvia claimed, I bore that freaking child, I have the right to do whatever I want with it, goddammit! And this whole thing later exploded in popular media, even making its way onto famous news broadcasters. And soon the whole country was buzzing about the story of a monstrous woman who tried to literally turn her daughter into a bag of money. By the way, I asked the authorities to keep Madeline's identity a secret from the public. So now, even if and when Sylvia ever was released back into society, the label she earned, Child Seller, would remain with her until the end of her days. And I doubt anyone in the entire country would want anything to do with the monster that she is. After all the official stuff had finally blown over, I went back to Liz's place and went to talk to Madeline. I'm really sorry, honey, but Mommy did some pretty bad stuff, and she got arrested for it. And now she's locked up in a cell somewhere far away. From now on, you're going to live with Daddy. The response from my daughter was absolutely priceless, and it melted my heart. Her frown slowly disappeared, and her eyes started to twinkle as she said, I get to live with you, Daddy? Yay, I'm so happy! Afterwards, I'd signed a contract for a bigger apartment with more rooms. Although I'd been living in a smaller apartment because I was thinking I should only do what was enough for myself, I was going to live with my daughter, who was about to head into puberty. So I thought it best to give her more space to grow and change. I made her own private room, because why not? A nice bed, a good study desk, a dresser full of Avery's old cute clothes from when she was Madeline's age, along with new ones I'd bought for her. Madeline couldn't believe what she saw. <laughs> Wait, this can't be my room, can it? She looked at me full of hope. And when I nodded as I smiled, she exclaimed, Oh my gosh, this is like a dream. Oh, thank you, Daddy. After the official stuff I had to do regarding the whole incident, I wanted to know exactly what kind of environment was Madeline living in this whole time. So I paid a visit to Sylvia's place with the police's approval. I went inside with a couple of officers. I found a mountain of empty instant noodle containers in the trash can, but I doubted Madeline was ever allowed to eat even something as simple as that. My rage was getting ready to overflow once again. I'm sorry, officers. I just can't bear the reality that my daughter was living in this hellhole. No need to apologize, sir. We agree. It's such a pity for such a child to live in this actual hellhole. You have my sympathy, sir. Madeline isn't showing it, but it's clear that she's suffering from an enormous trauma. So now I'm set on giving her the love and warmth she deserves. So much so that she'll eventually forget that trauma and live on to become the happiest girl in the world. Madeline, honey, you'll be living with me from now on. And of course, there will be days that I won't be home until later on because of work. So when I'm not home, be sure to go down to your Aunt Liz's house, just down the street, okay? Yeah, Auntie also said the same thing, so I'm going to go there all the time. Even Avery invited me to play with her sometime soon, so I'm excited. <laughs> That's good! When I was looking for a new place to live with Madeline, Liz suggested... Pair a couple apartments that no one lives in just up the street. I suggest you book a contract with one. That way I can keep an eye on my niece while you're working. Sounds like a good idea, right? Are you sure? It's quite a burden for you, I'm sure. And I don't want to cause Randall any trouble. Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's actually his idea for you to live up there. Perfect place, he said, since we live pretty close by. Thank you, Liz. It means so much. Well, I do only have one child. Avery's been pretty excited, seeing as how Madeline's kind of becoming a younger sister to her. Seems like Avery's teaching some things to Madeline, too, like a bit of math and some science. And they both have so much fun studying together. Seriously? That's so awesome. And I doubt Madeline could even get a better teacher. 
seeing how Avery's been kicking ass with pretty much everything I hear. Thanks to Liz's family, I'm confident Madeline won't ever feel lonely and sad, even when I get pretty busy with work. I personally told what had happened to Madeline to Randall myself, and when I was done, he said, I'm gonna make sure she never feels a single negative thing again. And I promise you, we're gonna support her no matter what. You just let her come over anytime. And don't forget, you bring your ass over here too, so that Liz can get you nice and plump with her famous cooking. <laughs> okay, well, if you insist, I'd love to. Seems like I truly destroyed my ex-wife's life with how I dealt with the situation. But Madeline has her whole life ahead of her. And it's my responsibility now to provide her the best of opportunities for her to grow and flourish into a strong, independent lady. Wish me luck, everyone. And I hope you have a nice day. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.